Hello, I'm DeMarco Casey, Director of Operations here at Atlas Motor Vehicle. I'm going to provide a, a brief tour around our dry room and you can see what we're currently doing. So if we step over, this is where we have uh, incoming material and, and some items that we're storing. So if you notice from the electrode that we received, um, this is what we received from our contract manufacturer. Um, that, that's where our process begins. So from this road of, of electro, then we go to our die punching process. This is where we uh, punch out our electrodes into final shape that will then go into the can. And then from there, those die punched electrodes, they move over to the uh, Z folding machine. So this is what you're seeing happening here. This is uh, where separator is um, placed in between your anode and cathode layers. Then from there, after we make that jelly roll, we bring it over here, we do some quality inspection. Uh, we ensure that there are no shorts uh, in that jelly roll. So meaning you don't want the uh, anode and cathode to, to be able to touch. There can't be any tears or anything like that. So that's what's happening here. After that, we, uh, we put that jelly roll into the can and we come over to the hot pot tester to ensure that there are no shorts. Uh, we're not passing current anywhere that uh, we don't want to. And then over here where we have uh, a couple of our engineers, um, this is our filling station. So it's where we uh, introduce the electrolyte into the cell. Um, also in this station, we um, have a crimping process where after that electrolyte is on and it's all soaked in, we take the, the lid of the cell and we crimp it closed. And so, and at that point, the cell then goes into a dwell state where we need to uh, prepare the cell for formation testing and then it goes outside of the room uh, onto the test station. And so it's important to understand where we started and where we're going. A lot of what you see in here today allowed us to get to this point, and we'll be bringing in some other team members that will talk about the new plastic cube cell design and the equipment that is coming um, in order to produce that. So at that point in time that we bring this initial equipment in, that allows us to, run, to understand what we need to do for high volume manufacturing. So just stay tuned, you'll hear from Max and Wayne thereafter. Uh, one is our inert atmosphere dry box, where we'll start filling our, our cells inside an oxygen-free environment to eliminate some, some issues we've been having. Uh, currently, we have a lot of manual processes that we'll be automating in the, in the near future. Max? Yeah, so right now we've got a manual die puncher that we'll be replacing with an automated one. Instead of Z-stacking, we'll be doing lamination and pick and place to build up those jelly rolls. On the back wall here, we're expecting our welders to assemble that plastic cell. The cool thing about this plastic cell is that it reduces overall weight of the battery, improves our electrode to terminal contact, and increases our jelly roll compression, all of which result in a more efficient battery. This plastic cell is something that not a lot of manufacturers do. A typical cylindrical cell has a metal housing here and a metal lid whereas this body is mostly plastic with insert molded terminals on either side. This allows us to fill our cell in a controlled atmosphere, weld the lid on in that atmosphere, and then remove our completed cell. 